explore uh, the effects of externalities on the private market. So what I have here is an image of a, our supply and demand framework for any good. I'll go ahead and call it um, it, whatever it is. And I'm going to get us to a point where we can explain what's going on in your textbook with what's called the social cost curve. But before I jump right into that market, I want to go back to our compact discs, our CDs, and I want to ask a stupid question. We explored the idea of each of us selling our used junk, or I'm saying CDs because that's the junk that I have that I could sell and I don't get around to doing because of opportunity costs as we've explored in great depth. So whatever your used junk, think about this. Think about the, your willingness to sell your used stuff versus my willingness to sell your used stuff. So if I were to model what you're thinking about using the red marker, this is distinct from the orange one there, There's a demand for used stuff, right? And the higher the price for used whatever, CDs, whatever it is that you have. Um, it's a downward sloping curve. As the price were cheaper, more people would be willing and able to buy this used junk that we all have in our lives. But let's think about the individual supply curves, yours versus mine, of your used stuff. Your used stuff. See, you probably are not participating in the market, or some people in discussions have said they are, but you as an individual, you have an upward sloping supply curve where, you know, if you could get more, you would provide more of your used stuff to the market, your used junk, whatever you want to call it. And uh, per perhaps for most people, this is, there is no quantity because the price is too low, but let's say for a second, just give me a chance to model this, that you are providing some used stuff to the market this much at the given price, uh, given what demand is. This is your supply curve of your stuff. If you could get more, you would provide more. Now let's think about my supply curve of your stuff. My supply curve of your stuff. See, when you sell your stuff, you have to give up any future use of that stuff. If we're talking about CDs, chances are I don't like your music anyway. I don't care about any future use of your stuff. And I know that's true of you and my stuff as well, right? Whatever your used stuff is, however much you value it, I don't value it. So for me, the cost of selling your stuff is lower than it is for you to sell your stuff and vice versa, right? So for me to sell your stuff, I face lower costs. So I would sell more of your stuff than you would at any given price because I don't bear the costs of foregoing it, that opportunity cost. You bear your own cost of, of that, right? So I would be happy to sell your stuff, and this is what thieves do, at a lower price. Uh, and more used stuff would be provided to the market if I didn't have to bear all the costs of selling it. More would be provided to the market if I didn't have to bear all the costs of selling it. If we didn't have to bear all the costs of selling stuff, more stuff would be provided to the market. At a lower price, than it really should be if all costs are accounted for. Over here to the orange model, which is going to be end up being generally a replica of what's in your textbook, we're talking about the production of some good called it. And let's say it has some negative externality. It results in pollution in its production. Well, if this supply curve is the private supply curve, it only includes the cost to the manufacturers of it. 
Let me make a note of that. If it produces pollution, if it passes costs on to other people who are not included in the market provision of it, third parties, isn't it true that the costs of producing it are actually greater than are reflected in the private supply curve? In other words, this is me selling your CDs. It's not showing all of the costs of producing that good, right? So if we were to factor in all of the costs of producing a good, the costs of producing each unit of the good would be higher. So the supply curve factoring in all costs would be a lesser supply curve. And a lesser supply curve is to the left. And so this is our social cost curve. And this is what you see in textbooks with, with negative externalities. I've approached it a totally different way than I think you've seen anywhere before with the CVs. Hopefully it's helpful. This supply curve ought to be back here if you factor in all costs. What does that mean about how much of the good that's supplied to market? Too much is provided when we don't factor in all the costs. If I've erased it, but if I could sell your used stuff, more would be provided to the market because I don't carry all the costs. If the producers of a good, it, aren't carrying all the costs of the production of it because some of it's being passed on to others in the form of pollution, too much is being provided to market. That's what that gap represents, is an overproduction of the good. Now, how much should the good cost? Should it still be a PM so people can afford it? No, that doesn't make any sense. It shouldn't be because there's damage to this, the production of this, and if we factored in the, the costs that those costs, the price should be higher. This is typically, you know what, I put an S down here for social. I'm going to change my mind on that uh, notation. The optimal price should be higher and the optimal quantity should be lower. So this is our typical they often don't include this, but I insist on it because it should be that way. This is our typical um, supply and demand framework illustrating the effects of a negative externality. And uh, I gave an example um, with uh, the tragedy of the commons of my congressperson. An easy way to go from orange to red in terms of policy is to tax it. Because taxes, if you levy the tax on the sellers, that reduces supply and we could move the supply curve to there and achieve the optimal amount of it. That would raise the price by doing that. So when people say taxes raise prices, that would be exactly the idea because that reduces the quantity demanded to achieve the level, the optimal level. If we did the tradable permits for it and we limited the amount of it to this amount. For this amount, the consumers are willing and able to pay this. And if the consumers want to do that pollution, who else, who better to pay for it? People who, who aren't consuming the good, they should pay a higher price for it. That's the whole idea. That was the challenge I had with my congressperson who said, well, we, we were giving out the permits to keep the price down. The price should be higher. The people who are buying this are contributing to this problem. If they're willing to pay for that, that's what they should be paying for. Um, so those are, uh, th that's our framework with the Pagovian taxes and the tradable permits. Of course, if we just set a limit to it, people would be willing to pay that for it in terms of a quota. Um, so that's the quota effect in our framework. And uh, I think that helps you understand the framework that's in your textbook.